Hi, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Natalie Frank. I'm one of the co-founders of the Rising Tide Society, and I am head of community at HoneyBook. And I really want to invite you today to our Global Tuesdays Together. For those of you who might be brand new to our community and to Tuesdays Together, to what we're all about, we are a community of small business owners and creative entrepreneurs who unite in the spirit of community over competition. We have over 400 local groups that are facilitated by extraordinary volunteer leaders, co-leaders, and chairs. We have a Facebook community with over 75,000 community members facilitated by the world's best moderation team and educational resources that we release almost daily from blog posts to webinars to templates, downloadable guides, Tuesdays Together meetups just like this, and so much more, all designed to help empower you on your business journey and really ensure that you're never going at it alone, that you always have someone to turn to or a, a source of education or knowledge that can help you to weather the storms that naturally pop up as you're building a business. And so in March, when one of those storms started and it became abundantly clear that it wouldn't be safe for our groups to meet during this global pandemic, we wanted to take our monthly meetup online and create a space where no matter what part of the world you live in, you have the ability to sit down with us at a Tuesdays together and join this really important conversation. And so today's conversation is incredibly important. We're talking about social media sustainability. We're talking about the future of online content from my lens, which is video, and where we're moving as business owners and as marketers as we continue to turn our passion into a profit. And I want to I want to kind of give a huge shout out. I, I'll introduce our guests formally in just a second. But to both of these guests, look, if you're tuning in today or you're watching the replay, you are in for a treat. Um, both Allison and Marvin are two people that I personally am inspired by as a business owner that I have asked personally for advice in my own business. They are incredibly brilliant. They have contributed already so much to our collective knowledge and ecosystem around video creation, brand strategy, marketing strategy, and so much more. And so um, I, I'm really excited to have both of them joining us today. And I would love to kick it off by introducing Marvin. So Marvin is a video strategist and speaker who is dedicated to impacting people through business using video. He runs MK Flav Video and is a full service video production company based in New Jersey that specializes in creating strategic and dynamic video assets for companies and entrepreneurs who want to make their business unstoppable. Marvin is driven to provide innovative videos that give you more opportunities, more time, and even stronger relationships with your customers. As a husband and father of two young children, he enjoys free time playing basketball and watching YouTube videos. He is also our Central Jersey Tuesdays Together chapter leader. And so without further ado, Marvin, I'd love to welcome you up to our Zoom stage. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you oh my gosh, me. and with the SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> background. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Marvin, I don't know if I can hear you. Let's make sure we can hear Hello. you. Hold on. Can you hear me now? We good? Test. This is awesome. Can everyone else hear Marvin? Is it just me? Oh, you can hear him. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make sure. Mic check. One, All two, right. one, two. Oh, it might just be my speaker. Give me one second here. Yeah, you know, funny thing about the background, I, I I wanted, I didn't think it would be professional enough to to do it, but I'm like, I got to be me, so I got to keep it. So, no, I love it, and I think that it is you, and not only that, it ties in so perfectly with our conversation today. Exactly. So it's gold, it's gold. Exactly. Okay, awesome. Now joining us as well is the one and only Allison Sugahara. For over a decade, Allison has obsessively honed her expertise in brand design and content strategy helping creatives and business owners confidently showcase their passions through thoughtful digital marketing. Declared a culture creator by her comrades, she's devoted to empowering individuals to cultivate their purpose and creativity by intuitively charging their own path. Allison thrives in high-level visualization and loves pouring into her communities through sharing knowledge and experiences and making genuine connections. She has worked with a wide range of brands from small local businesses to startups, all the way to corporate companies as significant as Disney. Her mission is to continue to create space for purpose-driven entrepreneurs to expand and prosper simply by doing what they love and being who they are. Allison, thank you so much for joining us as well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a little nervous because I haven't socialized in a really long time, so. 
I think we all feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was joking with my husband that I can't even watch like movies where people are hugging and in large yeah. crowds anymore without getting slightly anxious. So no, 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 you are in good company here. I, I connect with that fully. Um, let's kind of start where this conversation and, and the purpose behind today's video sort of started. And that's, um, you know, with this pandemic and quarantine and two things sort of starting to happen simultaneously. First, the fact that we have been connecting more by video just naturally because of this pandemic as business owners leveraging video in new ways. And also the fact that Instagram Reels dropped as a copycat uh, competitor to TikTok, which is something that we all have kind of mixed feelings on. Some of us um, are mad that it's a copy of TikTok. Some of us love reels and are grateful that it dropped on a platform where we already have an audience. Some of us are overwhelmed and wish that video would just disappear because it is intimidating and you know overwhelming. And if you're watching this right now, can you let us know where you're at? Let's start here. Let us know how you're feeling about video on social. Drop into the chat, you know, maybe, you know, have you used reels? Are you on TikTok? Um, what has been your experience so that we can know that as well? But for both Allison and Marvin, I'd, I'd really love to hear from you um, around this. You know, with TikTok exploding, as I mentioned, with Reels dropping on Instagram, there's just been a lot of commentary specifically on how do you utilize another channel and this frustration that I think we can feel as business owners around yet another feature to understand. So let's start here. Do you have any advice for small business owners that are trying to decide what to do and how to do it? Who goes first? Whoever wants to, Allison. Maybe you, since you, you kick, you, you're kicking. Since I jumped in, <laughs> since you jumped in, I'm gonna pass the the torch to you. Okay. So, what advice do I have? Do whatever you want, <laughs> because it's just that's how it's gonna be. I feel like things are just gonna keep rolling out. And once I finally got comfortable on TikTok, I felt like maybe I had a leg up on Reels, but I still don't understand the culture of Reels versus TikTok. So, I think you kind of dive into each one and just see what you like and then kind of go from there. I also say don't get too hung up on trying to do what you think you have to do. The best thing you can do on either reels or TikTok is just experiment. I 100% agree. I think I think we also have to realize too is like this this um platforms this stuff keeps happening. Like this is the same thing that happened when YouTube first came out, you know, like, um, and another thing too, is like, no one knows what's, what's going to get likes, what's going to go viral. If we knew what, what, what went viral, trust me, we would all be doing it, but we don't know. So for you to stress over like, oh my gosh, I need to get this many likes. I need to get this many followers with this single post. It's like, it's, you, we don't know, like we, we don't know. And I think just the best thing you can do is just be genuine, you know, have fun. And like, like I said, don't feel like you need to be like, oh my gosh, obsessing over like getting likes and getting followers. I think that just, that just plays into like this whole, like, um, the stereotype and like the negative things of social media, you know? So I think the best thing you can do is just be yourself, have fun, but obviously learn like what's actually happening. You know, if you haven't downloaded TikTok, I, I suggest like download it, check it out and see like what's actually being posted on there. It, it is a different type of create, the, the way they're, they're creating content on there is very unique. And I think that's what made TikTok so explode. You know, it's not, it's not just the dances. It's like, if you actually look like what's being created on there, it's a very unique creation that people like that, you know, like that, Instagram didn't have, Facebook didn't have, you know? So I think for that, for you, like you should just go in there and learn, like learn what, what's actually going on in there. Mm, I love that advice. I really love that advice. I think there is this pressure that we feel as business owners to measure up and not even measure up to like what drives the business. Like I'm not even talking about revenue. I'm not even talking about profit. I'm talking about the superficiality of vanity metrics. You both are nodding here because this is, this is something we all feel. It's that pressure that you both are touching on where it's like, you know, Allison, you're like, do what you want. And, and Marvin too, you're like, have freedom to create, have freedom to experiment, try new things. But I'd love to kind of dive into, you know, this sort of elephant in the room, which is like, yes, but we feel this pressure to perform. 
we feel this pressure to, um, you know, we look to the left and we look to the right and we see what other people are doing, or, you know, we will post something that for us, we feel like it's really awesome. And then it's crickets or there's no engagement or the algorithm has changed yet again. And so I'd love for you both to give a little encouragement or just to share like your honest gut check on how do you navigate as a business owner that insecurity or that fear? Because I think it does hold people back from even doing the, the things that we just talked about, the experimenting, the trying, the having fun, the learning the, the language or culture of a platform, because we are trained to go after ROI. We are trained to pursue these vanity metrics that don't even often ladder up to ROI, but yet we feel like we should, right? I'll stop there. I would just love to hear from both of you. How do we defeat this, this kind of mountain? Okay, I'll go again first. <laughs> um, actually, I, I was going to tell you this at the end, but I spent a long time creating like this freebie for detoxing um, on social media because I think that's, for me personally, I think that's where you start is like breaking down the system a little bit. A lot of this pressure that we feel is kind of self-imposed and it's been created by this culture that we've all contributed to. So I think that trying to empower yourself to make, you know, the decision to just keep moving forward and keep creating content because the reality is you will hear crickets sometimes, or you're not going to know when something explodes. And the other reality is think about every other business owner who feels just like you. There is so much content coming at us that like, I don't even know how people can consume this much in a day. I don't understand. So just keep that in mind. Um, I just saw a comment that said the social dilemma on Netflix. That's exactly how I feel because I feel like we've all felt like we needed to keep up, but now it's at a point where I think a lot of us who are actually feeling this way need to empower each other to break it down and just be okay with, you know, I've embraced the messy feed, like just little things that you can take off your plate that are taking up space in your head that really don't need to be there. Um, I would say like, I felt like that. I think it was in like March, May, I was like, I'm done feeling like I have to perform, you know, my social media is my thing. It's like, I don't, I don't do this cause I feel like I have to, I do this cause I enjoy it, you know? And like, there was a point where I was like, I'm not happy right now. I don't feel like posting. I don't feel like making content, you know? So I just been, been real with myself. And I think there's, there's other avenues that you can use video in your business. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we have time to dive into that today, but like there's other avenues that you can use video. But um, I think the, the number one thing you can do is kind of just understand like we're all, we all feel this way, you know, and like, and the same thing about social media is that you get what you put into it. You know, if you're just going on there just to, you know, I have an offer, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this, and you're not connected with anybody, it's like, probably not going to get a lot of engagement, you know, so you should be talking to followers, you should be talking to the people in your comments, you should be going out there engaging with people, you know, I look at social media as this big networking event, like, I can talk to anyone I, I like to talk to, you know, so go out there and, like, make friends, you know, and and I, I know I know it's a real fear, you know, if you post something, you get crickets, but I think this is what Rising, I think this is a perfect opportunity to shout out like Tuesdays together. Like if you are in there, you know, if you have like a lot of a lot of people comment on my stuff are people from Rising Tide. Like, I'm gonna be straight up. Like I've built those connections. You know, those are my those are my fans. You know, there's people out there supporting you. So if if you feel like that, then obviously then you should join communities like this to you know boost boost you up because that's what we do. You know, we're here for each other. We all the all the all the times lift each other up. You know, so I think that's I think if that's if that's the issue, if that's the thing holding you back. I think that's a that's a perfect opportunity for you to really dive into some communities because that's where that's where it starts. You know, then like you get clients, you get you get people who want who love who love your stuff. You know, and that's 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 what's going to help you like propel and get over those hurdles and fears so but yeah we all felt like that you're spitting fire just i know and he's answering questions that i even have down the line which is great i'm like or literally as you're talking marvin i'm like don't ask that one he answered it he answered it um and actually marvin i'd love to stay with you for a second and you know you're talking about because this is a question i had you kind of already answered it but this idea of being your authentic self and making connections using video and I'd love to hear from you because you said, I wonder if we can get into some of the different types of video. Let's kind of tackle these two things in one, which is, you know, how does video 
help us as business owners to make those types of connections? And also how does video help us to be our authentic selves in the world, right? Like what is it about video that you think is different than let's say copy or photo? Like what opportunity does it bring to business owners and why should we as business owners be taking video seriously? It's because video exists outside of time and space and it's almost like you get to step into like other people's worlds, you know, like, think of if if you don't have a video like how else do you get to experience like what this person is about what they're like like what they do how they do it how do you get to experience that unless a you work with them or you get you almost like you know you get to see pictures and then look at the copy and like i'm not saying that stuff doesn't matter it's important but it's like you almost have to wonder what it's like you know but video you don't have to wonder you can literally just show them you know you can literally bring people into your experience you know and that's that's kind of the thing that we, we try to break it down for people like you don't have to like flashy bells and whistles just for simple just keep it simple like ex let people experience you you know bring them into your world i'm pretty i'm sure there's there's so many people like out there who people like people don't get that you know like if, if you're a coffee shop like you know show what where, where you get your roast from like show like how what makes you unique like why'd you even start this like what what is it about like coffee do you love you know, like there's there's so many things that you can do like we don't have to make it this this hard it's just we we put these like pressures on ourselves that make this so difficult it's just like start there like let people experience what it's like you know like if you have a great product like what does it do like who who have you worked with like what if what have you done for them like what's share their story you know it's like we're not we don't have to like the thing that we focus on is like we don't have we're not trying to be flashy we're not trying to gimmick you into into working with us we're just going to be real like yo this is this is us like and and put the put the ball in your court like you can hire us or you want to work with us kind of thing so that's awesome i know straight fire today seriously um pivoting to you allison let's talk a little bit about like once you've kind of absorbed what marvin just said and you're like all right i'm ready I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to incorporate video. I want it to exist outside of time and space. I want someone to get to know who I am. A lot of people are asking about TikTok. Actually, Pauline just mentioned here, would you say TikTok should be a primary platform for small business? And so I'd love to hear from you. Like, what is your experience been on TikTok? Why did you join in the first place? Um, what have you learned? Like any insight that you can give? Because I do think um, and actually I'd love to see, can actually we do this? Anyone who's watching right now, can you hit us up in the chat and let us know? if you're on TikTok um, or if you're not. So yes or no, can you just hit us up with a yes or no in the chat here? Let's get a feel for who's on it. My gut is gonna say most of these folks are not using TikTok for business or if they have an, here we go, if they have an account, um, it's, it, they're, they're absorbing and consuming, they're not creating. Yeah. And so I wanna kind of illuminate for folks that haven't yet jumped onto the app or aren't familiar with it, what your experience has been like and, and what you think honestly they should be thinking about when it comes to TikTok. TikTok is the wild, wild west. And kind of to echo what Marvin said, video and like showing up on video and creating for yourself should bring you a lot of joy. Like you should do things that are joyful. And I have to say that joining TikTok, which was kind of encouraged by Marvin because after we were in Upward together, I was like, okay, I need to just be more comfortable being on video. I started, so I joined TikTok and by kind of just consuming the content, you see how freaking creative people are. It's insane. So my mind was like blown and I was personally liberated. I started creating content just experimentally and it almost like broke me out of my like rigid habits of thinking I have to create a certain way. There is no rhyme or reason. And I think that there's so much growth potential on TikTok. What I've learned is that like, you can go the route of strategy and you know posting daily which i tried out and it totally helps you grow but aside from that you can also do experimentation and kind of see what sticks and then you might not know that something will explode and what i love about TikTok is not the virality but the conversations that start you have no idea how many people are might be feeling how you're feeling and when you start that conversation and you get a ton of comments and you're able to engage it not only kind of inspires you to create more content but you're really making those genuine connections and it's it, i mean honestly TikTok like liberated me so <laughs> it was it's I, I would highly recommend it as a business because i think it puts it shifts your perspective on how you are supposed to show up
You're muted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when I first joined TikTok, I think I was like a lot of millennials and I kind of joined it not as a joke, but like I did. I kind of was like, okay, what are the kids? I just need to keep up with the kids these days and I'm going to download this app and I'm not going to spend any time on it. And then five hours later, um, you know, I'm like, where did my day go? And I just, you know, I absorbed and it was a different language. It was a different creativity. It was a different, like, for example, um, I think it, there's a sense of liberation that I experienced on TikTok. And I wonder from both of you on this, that there is something about this platform where it's almost like memifying creativity in a way that then people jump on and make entirely their own. And so you'll see like the same song being used to talk about business to be talked about, like in my world, I'm on infertility TikTok. So like infertility, like heavy subjects, but you'll see these sort of, I don't know what to call it, like the memification or like it makes a taxonomy of a, a type of content on TikTok or like a storytelling way on TikTok that's unique. That I don't see on Instagram. I don't see on Facebook. I don't see on YouTube that is so unique to the platform. And so I'd love to pivot this to both of you. If you were to give somebody one tip for getting started on TikTok, if, they, if they're like I was day one, had never opened the platform, where do we begin? All these notes, where do they begin if they want to even see if this is right for them? What should they do? Um, I, would like, I would like to just say like the, the best what what t what makes TikTok so great is like, it's it's almost like you get a chance at like to like if on Instagram like the only people who are gonna see your stuff is your followers or if you so happen to use hashtags or or like the 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 explore page TikTok it's almost like they have their own system so like you don't necessarily have an audience but you can technically build one you know and I think that's what's really cool about that so I think just as a, in a as a business standpoint it's like you almost you have a chance at doing anything like i don't know if you saw the i don't know the guy's name but he was doing the little skateboard thing with the with ocean blend and like that thing went crazy he blew up the the owner even joined tiktok and did a video his video was like three million I'm like you know so, so like there's this there's, there's opportunity there obviously there's opportunity there but i think i think the one of my favorite tiktoks are the narration storytelling ones um, which I've never seen on Instagram. And I'm, I'm like, yo, this is so crazy. I finally forgot how to do it. Um, and it's actually pretty simple, but it's just so cool, you know? And I think I think that learning how to do that, I think for, for businesses, like I, I we do so we do something like that on a larger scale for our clients. So like you can do something like that for your business and like, you know, get, like I said, get people to experience you. I think narration TikToks are pretty cool. Um, but like I said, like just get in there, like spend, spend, spend a few times, like just, consuming the content not just like seeing what they're doing but like understand like what's actually happening here you know i think i think that's a pretty pretty cool way to start that was going to be my advice too was consuming the content because the more you consume the more you're able to see the narration the um the educational side there there are so many little i think they call it like alt tiktok but like different like avenues that you can go and you might find yourself on Christmas talk and you're like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even know I needed Christmas talk today. And it's not even close to, well, it's kind of close to Christmas, but it's, I would say consume the content. So you can kind of get an idea of what people are doing because it is just on this other level where you're saying, Marvin, you can take what you do for clients and put it down on a different scale, but you have a whole wide range of options. Yeah. Kate says there's so many possibilities. It's like infinite possibilities. Um, I was going to say something else, but I can't remember. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. No, I think that's so important. It's so, so, so important. Let's talk about the reels to TikTok or the, the reels and TikTok kind of overlap slash differences slash similarities. I, I would love to know for folks that are maybe, and actually let's do this. If you have used reels or have watched reels, can you hit me up with a yes or a no in the chat? Let us know now. So yeah, I'm expecting a lot more yeses, some noes. Okay, awesome, awesome. What are the similarities? What are the differences? If you were to have to explain it at a high level, how would you compare and contrast the two, um, one a platform, one a feature within a platform? Well, I kind of remembered what I was gonna say, but and it kind of um, is relevant. But when you're on TikTok or when you're able to discover so many different types of creators, which I don't think you can on Instagram anymore. That level of discoverability just isn't there. And I can't even tell you how many different things I've learned just about U.S. history, other cultures, 
um, parts of business, finance, like, I mean, so niche that it really is, again, this like infinite database of possibility where I think on Instagram, if you have an audience, it serves you well to show up on reels. But if you don't have an audience, there's also opportunity for growth. And I think my, in my opinion, I think that Instagram took that idea of rapid growth um, from TikTok. So there are a lot of trends and different things from TikTok that end up kind of spilling over a little bit later onto Instagram. Um, so for if you want to try a trend, I think Reels is probably a great place to start because on TikTok, you got to be deep into it and it is rapid fire. A trend that's happening yesterday is already gone by today. Um, and on Reels, I think a hyper focus on the educational content is I think where a lot of people are also seeing growth. I'm not entirely sure because I, I haven't spent enough time if that level of personal connection or rather the permission to really show up as yourself completely unfiltered on TikTok is there yet on Reels. I would say it's, I think the functionality of what made TikTok great isn't there on Instagram, but like, like Allison said, if you have a following, you should, you know, for everyone who complains about like, uh, like the algorithm and stuff like that, this is your opportunity to, you know, get a lot of more engagement, you know, um, I, I've, I can't, I don't have no data to prove it, but I've been watching my 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 reels and compared to my regular posts to my igtv videos they've been getting i've been getting a lot of like more engagement and also the thing too is like people only see your content if they engage with this so you, you this is another opportunity for you to capture those people who haven't been following who haven't been engaging with your post so it's it's a yes yes it's, it's a double yes if you don't want to pay for ads you know so it's like you should be on there um if you have a following on ig reels um but um but yeah i think i don't think the the creative functionality like is there yet but hopefully it does and like like you said discoverability isn't there yet um but like but if you have a following you should if or if you, if you have a small following small audience it doesn't matter you, i think just the fact that p you can engage in a certain way is pretty, pretty cool so um yeah awesome we have a logistical question that either of you can answer so do TikTok posts have to be live or can you pre-record and then post? And then also um, she was asking TikTok tips for the perfectionist. Um, doing 98, not having to do 98 takes would be helpful. I think that's my friend Pauline. <laughs> I, think, I think it's all of us actually. Yeah, inside, okay, okay, deep yeah. inside. But yes, 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 go. Uh, tips for the perfectionist. Oof get over it. <laughs> I love you. But like, that's, I mean, you don't have to be live on TikTok. First of all, you can just pre-record stuff. I have so many drafts just in my draft folder. Um, and I save it for a rainy day and there are different versions of those drafts. So depending on how you feel that day, you can post, you know, which one you think is better, but because the nature of TikTok is something goes out, somebody sees it for however many seconds and then it goes away. Same like everything else. Don't focus so much on trying to be perfect because it's not gonna matter in five seconds, you know? I love that. You mentioned drafts um, and it brings us back to actually a question that I think Raina asked very early on um, that we haven't had a chance to get to yet, but this is kind of perfect timing. So we've talked about creating and just experimenting, but like how do we weigh this difference between consistent content creation versus the creating and experience experimenting and you mentioned like having a bunch of drafts that are already pre-created how should we be thinking about this and how how the heck do you come up with all the ideas that you have like any tips that you have for us in maybe making that shift from like we can the creating and experimenting to the consistency um to the planning to being organized where's the balance how do we do it what advice do both both of you have I would say, um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I would say like you're not, you're, you're never going to get to the consistent content if you don't start. So don't let that hold you back from not like, I know some people need outlines and need everything in order to, to do it. But like, if you don't get started first, you're never going to get to that point. Um, uh, one thing you could do is batch shoot and rec batch record and edit content, you know, 
but that you but like you said you have to have ideas and you have to just go for it you can't just sit on and think on it for for years just take it put it out there see if, see if the people enjoy it if if you're happy with it put it out you know i think um obviously the takes thing like just you know make sure you get it right but I, but there's a sense of there's never going to be perfect you know we're never we're never going to be perfect what we did yesterday we should we should like what we did yesterday we should want to be better than that you know so this as creatives we're never going to be satisfied with our work so don't don't let that i wouldn't say don't let that hold you back but um get to the point where it's like you you you're doing this on a consistent basis but like you, you're getting started at least so i think the first step is to get started then worry about like how you can start replicating this into a more uh sustainable sustainable way I think that's fantastic advice. I also think that um, for the people that like to create maybe content pillars for like your Instagram, for instance, you can do the same concept for TikTok. Like for me, like a lot of my storytelling and narrations do really well. Um, but then I also like to sometimes um, just do it. I call them bed talks. It's my TED talk. And it's just riffing. It's like a monologue. So I have like different pieces of content that I focus on. But if you want to experiment, then put that as your pillar. Because I also have to say that by not sticking to a kind of rigid schedule, most of my viral content is all experimental. And the viral content has actually helped me create the content or get in the mindset or mind frames to kind of have those pillars or the consistent type of content moving forward. And for anyone who doesn't know what a content pillar is, could you give us like the one sentence description of like, what is a content pillar and how do you use it in marketing? Sure. Okay. So content pillars are basically kind of a source of inspiration, maybe a category that you pull to generate content or get inspired to create content. So like I said, I have like a storytelling bracket or, you know, educational bracket, experimental bracket like that. I love it. We have a couple questions here around one topic and I'll, I'll read two of them. Um, Jennifer Cooper asks, can we still be a professional on TikTok? And um, we also got a question about like, is this something I should pursue uh, as, or I should try as a resume writer? I'm worried about coming off as unprofessional. I do think TikTok has that reputation of being casual. Um, so I would love to hear from, from both of you, like, are there professional TikToks? Do they do well? Um, and any examples that you have to maybe direct us to or folks that are just doing it really, really well. I got to look and see. Oh, I wish I remembered her name. I think her name's Jennifer. Shoot. Oh, I got to figure, I got to do some research and then send it to you because she is a, she helps college kids um, and people that are looking for new jobs or new careers. And, um, very professional TikTok. It's all tips and tricks. All it is, is like, here is this scenario. Let, I'm going to dive into it. And then she gets comments and then she responds to those comments. You can 100% show up professionally. That is totally your prerogative and up to you. Like you, that's the beauty of it is you get to create exactly what you want to create. What was the other question? Um, just like how, so you're mentioning someone that does it and you can do it professionally. Um, and also just like, how, how do we, like, I, I don't know, how do you do that? How do you find your, your professional voice on TikTok? I think people just have this assumption that it's teenagers dancing. Totally. Yeah. I think that, I mean, think about this. This is a, it's a casual setting, but it's a professional conversation. It's a professional networking group. Exactly what Marvin said. Think about what Marvin, Marvin said earlier. He thinks of video marketing as like a big networking event. You can show up exactly that way. If you want to you know, show up on camera and have different, again, lessons or um, tips and tricks. I think there's any which way you can do it, but I'll let Marvin take it over because I'm rambling. Yeah, I've seen doctors, I've seen lawyers, I've seen anybody on, on TikTok. It's, it's, here's the, and if, if you're worried about a young audience, guess what? These kids are going to grow up, right? They're going to have money. They're going to need services. So if, if you're worried about that, at least set yourself up for the future because these kids are going to grow up and they're going to need your services one day. So if that's what you're worried about, that that's, uh, don't worry about that. But I, like I said, I've seen doctors, I've seen lawyers, I've seen a lot of people. Yes, you can dance on there. Yes, you can give some really 
thoughtful advice and tips. You know, people, when they want, when they consume content, they want to be uh, entertained or they want to be educated. So you can break down some really complex concepts and just break it down into a fun, cool way that people can understand, you know? So it's, yes, there's, there's a ton of professional ways to be on TikTok. I think, I think for that alone, like I said, the younger audience has a following. So if TikTok ever goes away, you know, these people are going to be looking for you on other platforms, you know, that's the, that's the number one thing. It's like, and I know like, um same thing with, with all the other platforms like what happened with snapchat they took um they took the stories and now the stories are implemented on instagram now they, they've done the same thing with with the with the reels so like whatever the, even if there's another platform two years from now the same thing it's like it, yes it may be a younger audience but they might they will grow up and still they're going to be looking for you on the platform i think for that alone you should be diversifying yourself to like you know so you're not just solely on tiktok but you know they look for you on the platform i've seen a lot of them switch to start switching their content to back to youtube i've seen a lot of that like facebook so it's like there's there's ways you can do this that can set yourself up for like for the future and and if we're if we don't it's about engaging like authentically like we're not trying to um you know we don't if we don't want to pay for ads if you don't want to pay for ads and you the best other way to do it is to engage authentically and i think doing that would be a perfect opportunity so let's actually use that as a jumping off point this idea of engaging authentically being your authentic self um, i want to kind of tackle this balance that we have to strike or is it even a balance that we have to strike between the feeling the need to be professional and truly providing value, you know? Like, is there a world where you can be so much so your authentic self um, that because you're providing value, people, you know, are, are drawn to both the content you're creating, the like value they're gonna get out of it as the recipient, but also maybe your personality, or do you feel like this more traditional professionalism that I think we're, we're hinting at, I wanna kind of, highlight the fact that I think we've been trained and taught to act a certain way on the internet. We've, been, especially anyone who's in here who is not a, a Gen Zer, who is a millennial or older. Um, you know, I remember a time when my parents said, don't talk to strangers. And now all I do for a living is talk to strangers, right? Like our world has dramatically changed. And I think this idea of being professional has too. So how do we, how do we kind of find our own voice in this battle between being our authentic self, still feeling this pressure to be professional, realizing at the end of the day it's all about the value we're providing it just it feels like a ton of different inputs and i think some of us get stuck with how to navigate that in a way that's true to us so i don't know if you have help there but i think this is like maybe where the professionalism question needs to turn now it's like how do we figure it out how do we figure out who we should be or who we are on on video online well first of all it's 2020 so we can do whatever the we want. <laughs> um, honestly, cause we're a branding agency and a lot of what we do is clarifying the message for our clients. And we have booked certain clients off of using the F word on our website. So it's almost like qualifying actually, you know, there's somebody out there for everybody, you know, like even when you're investing, personally investing in a brand, there's a reason why you feel called to you know, invest in that brand. And I think that the same goes for the way you show up. If you're a business owner, you get to be professional if you want to stay in that lane. But if you want to liberate yourself and you already have an audience that finds value, sure, you might lose some people. But if you feel truly called to show up 100% as yourself, then I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. If anything, you're going to get closer and closer to cultivating the actual community that you want to be connected with. I think for me on, on TikTok specifically, because I've gone this like crazy route and not done the regimented kind of niche direction, I've actually cultivated more of a community that's like very, very niche. Like we don't just like marketing, but we also like Disney and we also like, you know, it's very, very narrowed down, which I think is a really unique opportunity. Look, I own a business and I don't own a suit. So whatever what this idea of professionalism is for us, I think we got to just, like I said, go out there and just be who we are. Um, people, have, people have chosen to work with me um, because they, they like my personality, they like how I present myself, you know. So I think is there's there needs to be a way where you can just 
do that, you know. Um, I think about like one of my favorite artists, uh, Lecrae, he just dropped an album and he did a whole like documentary about his whole album, his whole process and why he chose to do it. It, what it did for me is gave me more appreciation for the, for the work, you know. And I think about like for for your clients and for for the people you work with, like what is it that you can show them so they can appreciate how you do how you do what you do, why you do what you do, and who you do it for. So also too, you gotta understand who your who your audience is, like who's your target audience, who you talking to. That that's key. But um, but um, I think I said there's there's this sense of we we love to see what what's going on in the inside like we're so close to it we think no one's gonna no one's gonna want to no one cares about this but actually we're just so we're too close to it so i think just start letting yourself out there like explaining things differently and just showing people what it's like um like what, like what it's like to work with you and just bring them in like bring them in on the inside let them, let them see it's them see some things they probably would never see in the small interaction that they they get to see they get to meet you so Amazing. Okay, wait, hold on. Can we, I need to doodle. I own a business, but I don't own a suit. That's going to be like my next mic drop quote from Marvin, because you know I what? Can't, I can't take credit for it though. It's a lot for this song. <laughs> um, but I love it. And look, I think, I think the heart behind that is so on point. It's just something where we've navigated into a new economy. We're living in a very different world. The rules of what worked yesterday are not the rules that are going to apply to our future. And that is not just in what defines professionalism as we're talking about, but that also is like, how do we navigate these platforms? How do we adapt video into our strategy? How do we discern what was working last year in our social media strategy and maybe what now we're going to let go of? And we're actually going to stop doing right because we can't do it all which is the heart behind some of this conversation too we have to make these decisions so let's actually kind of dive into that how do you decide what to quit like how do you decide what to give up when it comes to social media marketing like what should we be thinking about in terms of 2021 our future the trends where we're going and what no longer serves us. And I want to pass it to Allison because I, I don't mean to take one of the things that I hope you say, but I, I do want to hopefully steer you in this direction about the death of the curated feed. Um, and, and just like as an example of like what needs to die or is dying, whether we want to admit it or not, and where is our future? Where are we going? What's the trend for 2021? I'd love to hear from both of you on that. Well, this is so funny because this is the second time where you talked about something that is really relevant to a freebie I literally just created for this group because it's all around like how do you start clearing your plate and going through the mess and one of the first things is taking inventory what is actually draining you like have you like exactly what you're saying have you taken the time to assess what you used to do what worked for you but like now this is a different attitude 2020 was a whirlwind of the year a lot of people have been through some shit and we're at this point where it's like no BS anymore. So you need to take the time to kind of assess, you know, what brings you joy and what doesn't on the app. Exactly what Marvin said too, you know, he stopped creating because it no longer brought him joy. So where do you, how can you get back to a place where you're cultivating that joy? Um, for me, I said death of the messy or of the curated feed because I knew that that was one thing that was really taking up so much space and energy that really didn't need to be taking up space. Some people find joy in that. And I think that is perfectly okay. Some people who love to, and like are machines that can create these awesome, you know, templates for their feed. I am so invested in video marketing at this point that like, it doesn't matter what it looks like to me. So taking the time to take inventory will help liberate you to just get rid of the things that you thought might be a big deal that really just aren't anymore, especially if it doesn't bring you joy. That's the main point. And then trends. So great for looking back and making the, that discernment, but then any trends that you, you see coming or for 2021, like what, what's the future of, of social, maybe the future of video, um, anything that you're getting glimmers of that like you're thinking about in your business as you're building strategy? This might be a question for Marvin, but I honestly think that to me, I think it's going to continue to be more like the wild, wild west. I think people are so over this like perfection, this curation that everything's being tossed out the window and we're literally like breaking down the system in order to rebuild it again because and so that's what I see is that it's just going to be a lot of like, here I am, like take it or leave it. Um, 
only thing I'll add to that is like it's like I said, people are just tired of the BS. Like no one wants to this idea of just trying to fool people into a gimmick or things like that. Like people just want want real. I think we just we're gonna go back to our roots. It's just like what we came on this platform for to connect to see what other people were doing. You know, Facebook said, "What's on your mind?" Like we want to, we just want to get back to that connection. I think, I think we're gonna see it. I've, obviously, we see it now, like with with like not being able to meet and everything with with Zoom I th- connecting virtually. I think just people just want to to be real and connect with people. I think that that's gonna be a huge huge trend coming up and and go, just continue on for the rest of this year. Awesome. Let's talk apps and tools. How do you actually create the videos? You know, what does it look like for somebody that wants to create their first reel or that wants to create their first TikTok? Um, are you using everything in app for both of those? Are there additional apps that you use? Any tips or techniques to get really tactical for our business savvy crew here would be amazing. Whoever wants to go first. I actually use my computer. <laughs> I just can't. My phone's kind of small and I got big hands. So I was like, I, I can't edit on my phone. So I use I just edit on like Adobe Premiere Pro because that's what I use professionally. So um, I know there's a bunch of like Adobe Rush and there's other apps. Um, I don't I don't I don't know if Allison edits in. I don't think she edits in the app. Do you? Because I, I. You're so fancy. Mystery. I can't believe you use. <laughs> Premiere Pro. <laughs> it's believe it or not, it's way easier for me than okay. to like do like the the mobile stuff because I know where everything's at. Like I know I know how to get my stuff. I, I can do it way quicker. On, okay, on stuff, that's hilarious because so that's that's when I was filming the freebie yesterday, I had to go. I had to switch from like TikTok to iMovie, which is like the most basic platform. I'm like the, I hate this. Um, I film everything I can in TikTok um, or Reels, but I also use InShot as well. So when I'm you can actually record voiceovers in TikTok, and so a lot of what i do i might actually splice up the video in InShot and then upload it to TikTok and voice it over there um or i just voice it over on InShot and drop it into TikTok. it really depends on what i'm doing and i can't think of a specific example um how is that spelled exactly how you said that in shot but it's one word Awesome. And you actually, Allison, turned me on to InShot and that's how I created one of my narration videos for Reels. Um, And it's, it is awesome. It's like pretty intuitive and um, easy to kind of get familiar with if you're familiar with any other kind of platform. And I still think it's funny, Marvin, that you use Premiere Pro for um, all things video, but it makes sense. As a photographer, I like have to use Lightroom, even on mobile. I just have to, and I have to, you know, handle the exposure on iPhone photos. I can't help myself. So I get it. I get it. And it totally resonates. Um, let's see. Yes. Raina saying like, you can't do voiceover or music on reels, um, or if you can help, uh, which is actually kind of a statement slash question. So it's like, can you do voiceover, um, in reels? What I'm hearing is no use an external app for reels. Okay. Yeah. And then for folks who don't have music, um, do we know what the situation is there? I know there are some business accounts that don't have access. Honeybook is one of them. This is a really good example. Honeybook. Um, which is why we do a lot of our reels over on the Rising Tide Society account, which, um, sh- you know, shameless plug, we have a really fun reel from Allison and Marvin that just dropped today on the Rising Tide um, Instagram. But um, any tips for that? And then also tools to allow you to caption videos. As everyone knows, um, accessibility is really important to us. And um, like we have Otter AI on here for, for live closed captioning. So any tips on, you know, any of those types of challenges the music the voiceover the captioning would be great i would honestly be really careful about music actually if you are a business um and you're selling a product even if you're not selling a product in the video like i think tiktok is taking this very seriously so pretty soon they might roll out like royalty free so if you can use royalty free anytime you are able i know that's probably not the answer that we want but i've been even though I still use music on TikTok, I'm trying to be more mindful because there's a reason why we don't have access to it on Reels. So all I'm saying is, and I I can't even imagine how they would regulate this, but just be a little bit more cautious or, you know, careful when it comes to music. Um, And then captioning, I use, I've used Clipomatic and then Clipchamp is another one. And 
I'm really picky. This it's so tedious, but I'm picky about the way that it shows up on the screen. So what I'll do is I'll upload the video in ClipChamp and then copy the caption. This is insane. I'll copy the captions and put them into TikTok and set them up how I like. Everything I use is more uh, advanced and harder. I don't I don't capture my TikToks, so definitely um, plug for it. But if you want to create like other um, videos outside of the platform, um, I do have a freebie um, that has like a list of like cameras, programs, all this, all the good stuff you need software on. I think I just have to double check. It's a link on my, if you go to my Instagram, I have my like link that has all my links. You can, it should be in there, but I'll double check just to make sure. But, um, but like I said, all my stuff are kind of based on the like, people who want to create content outside of it, but you can definitely implement it into like your, your mobile stuff too. But it's, it's a lot. I can't think of it off the top of my head though. Amazing. No, that's awesome. Well, before we wrap up, first, I want to get links to those freebies that you both have mentioned. Um, if you have any freebies or free links, feel free to grab them now and drop them into the chat for um, all of our viewers today. Also, we are going to be giving away two awesome swag items um, in just a little bit. And I normally have, uh, let's see, Olivia on task, but this week we have kind of a busy week. So what we'll do is we'll wrap up with one question and I'll get in touch with the team and find our two winners. So this gives you an extra 30 seconds if you haven't yet posted how amazing Allison and Marvin are on Instagram stories for a chance to win some swag. Um, but to close us out here while we are dropping, oh yay, good, Marvin got his link in and I know Allison will get yours in there in just a second. Um, I'd love to kind of wrap up with one final question. We'll start with Marvin and then go to you, Allison. As someone's looking forward into 2021, this year has been really hard on all of us. It's been really hard on small business owners. We look to 2021, we see it as a new year, a fresh opportunity, and I know it's just October, but if anyone else is like me, they're already thinking it's January in their head uh, and trying to jump ahead. If you could give the business owners watching today one last bit of advice, one last tip or something to take with them into the future of their content creation, their social media marketing, I'd love to hear from both of you, honestly, what would that one tip be? Okay, I'll start. Um, oh, also, first of all, I sent the link privately to Sharon and I can't figure out how to send, how to send it to everybody. <laughs> so maybe I'll share, I'll send, I'll text it to you, Nat, or something like that. Okay. Um, one piece of advice it's so cheesy be yourself that's like the like tap into yourself because when you're showing up on video you can't fake it and if you're somebody who doesn't like to show up on camera that's okay like figure out how you can you know create something and then narrate over it or just do a piece of royalty free music and like you drawing or whatever I, anything that feels right to you is what's right. So don't ever let your gut or like, don't not hold on. You <laughs> check in with your gut, basically follow your gut. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, I have this saying, uh, show don't tell. So if you if you have a great service show us if you have a great product show us if you if you had an amazing story your client had show us tell us the story like show us the story you know don't just tell us like let us bring us in let us experience that i think the best thing you can do for for your business is being able bring being able to let allow people to experience you i know you're great i know what you do is awesome i know what you do is helping someone so the best thing you can do for yourself is to allow people to be able to experience that before they get a chance to sit down and talk with you. Oh, gold from both of you this entire time. I cannot thank you both enough for joining us here today. I just dropped Allison's freebie. There we go. And Kate's going to combine them for you. Um, here we go. Yes. And so please, please, please make sure that um, while you're downloading freebies, while you're checking out our amazing speech speakers, you're following them on Instagram. Um, and speaking of Instagram, we have two winners. I'm going to do like a little fake drum roll here with my fingers uh, for our swag. We have a bunch of you that shared. So thank you to everyone who hopped on social and was posting and sharing. 
Um, our two winners, the first is Akua. Akua, you are one of our winners. And then at Mrs. Sarah Chapman, um, you are our second winner. So at Akua, oh, at Akua, at Mrs. Sarah Chapman, thank you both for sharing on stories, what you're learning and loving. Um, I will shoot you over a DM on the Rising Tide Instagram in just a bit to get you hooked up with some awesome giveaway items. And before we fully close, I just wanna thank both Allison and Marvin again Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your expertise. I want to encourage everyone who is listening today to go to their Instagrams um, at MKFlav video at Polygon Market in case you're watching the replay and don't have access to the chat. Please go follow both of them, engage with their amazing video content here um, and on all platforms where these two exist. We are so, so grateful for both of you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you all so much for tuning into today's Tuesdays together. Awesome.